Well, Chinese officials aren't happy that the Biden administration is now launching formal trade talks with Taiwan. Taiwan right now is conducting military drills to prepare for the possibility of a future Chinese invasion. A Chinese government spokesperson warns that Beijing will use, quote, all necessary measures to resolutely safeguard sovereignty, security, and development interests. Joining us now is Michael Allen. He's former senior director for counterproliferation strategy at the National Security Council, this under President Bush. Um, Michael, thanks so much for being with us. So yesterday, the Biden administration announces these formal trade talks with Taiwan. So China then immediately jumps in and threatens to respond to this development with military force. Yes, uh, I think China is getting more and more belligerent. I don't think it's empty rhetoric. I don't see an invasion quite yet, but they see Taiwan irreversibly drifting away from their orbit. Taiwan wants nothing to do with China, especially after they saw what Hong Kong, what happened to Hong Kong when, as it was sort of brutally reincorporated into China. So I think the Chinese are lashing out and trying to intimidate Taiwan. And like you said, it's not only rhetoric. China is now sending troops to Russia to help back up Vladimir Putin. They have this new uh, sort of dynamic alliance. Uh, it kicked into high gear last year, as far as we know, publicly, when she asked Putin to delay invading Ukraine so that it wouldn't disrupt the Beijing Olympics. Putin then seemed to accommodate that insane request. And now here we are. Yeah, remember they called it a friendship without limits. I, I think these two authoritarian leaders have bonded mostly over wanting to reduce the role of the United States in the world. They want to be able to dominate their respective spheres. Obviously, Russia is failing in Europe. But as you know, um, China has aspirations to dominate Asia, to turn the United States out of Asia, and to eventually displace us as one of the world's leading powers. That's very important, and it ought to be something that the White House and the president are talking about frequently, which is what are the stakes of a rising China that is militarily modernizing and also uh, an economic force to be reckoned with? Well, so to that point, Michael, this is, you know, looking down the road here, but this caught my eye from the Wall Street Journal. Let's put this up on screen. Uh, America's industrial base isn't ready for war with China. A war may arrive in this decade, they write, and the U.S. must be prepared without a defense industrial base that can rapidly produce and repair platforms and munitions. America's military will be like a great football team that can play only through the first quarter. Now, this shocked me a bit because it was my understanding that America's military industrial base is the strongest and most advanced in the world. I mean, taxpayers foot the bill for it to the tune of trillions of dollars every year. Is that not correct? I still think we have the best industrial base in the world, but what's happening is, is that there's a tremendous demand, for example, for more ships for the Navy. We realize that the future conflicts or the places we need to be the most are certainly in the Pacific Ocean. We desperately need new ships, and I don't know that we have enough ironworks, so to speak, shipbuilding yards that can take us up to where we need to be quickly. So this is a big problem. There's a variety of studies going on here in Washington to figure out what to do about it, but we definitely need to budget for this and get it started now so that we can keep China at bay. Well, perhaps the U.S. government could throw some more dollars at the problem. Maybe that would fix it. Michael, we got to leave it there. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Thank you.